As an ODL student, technology can be very helpful to your studies. Having access to a computer and the internet can help your studies by connecting you to information and the online UNISA community. This section will begin to familiarize you with some of the things you can do on a computer and some of the terminology that is used. Let's start by listing some of the useful things you can do with a computer. Some of the terms we use may initially be unfamiliar to you, but they will be explained along the way. Using a word processing program like Microsoft Word, you can type up your assignments using the computer and a keyboard. No more writing assignments by hand. Using the internet, you can search for information that could be useful for completing assignments. You can access MyUNISA and find information that is important for your studies. Through MyUNISA, you can connect with study material, fellow students and lecturers, search for books in the library, submit assignments and much more. You can also use your MyLife email account to receive important email messages from UNISA and to communicate to others. All of this means that you can work efficiently, find the information that you need and most importantly, always be informed about your studies through MyUNISA and your MyLife email account. There are four areas covered in this video. Basic computer knowledge. Microsoft Word and the keyboard. Windows Explorer, creating a filing system and filing documents. The Internet, World Wide Web, MyUNISA and MyLife. Before we go into more detail, let's get started with some computer basics. Chances are you're watching this on a computer. If you are, try to identify some of the keys and devices while you watch. Keep this DVD with you so that when you have access to a computer, you also have the guide at hand to help you. You're looking at a computer that is made up of a few parts. A monitor with a screen that shows you what you're doing. A CPU or central processing unit which is the brain of your computer. A keyboard. A mouse which doesn't look like a mouse at all but like this and the mouse pad that it rests on. A printer may also be plugged into this computer. A computer is switched on using this button on the CPU and in a few minutes the screen will come to life with icons on it that may look like this. On the screen you'll also see an arrow. Now you should see the arrow moving. I'm able to do that using the mouse. As soon as the mouse rests on an icon Double clicking with my right index finger on the left of the mouse will open up the program. If you don't see the icon on the screen, follow the path on the screen. Start, Programs, Microsoft Office, Word. The most important icons that you should recognize are Start, Microsoft Word, Windows Explorer, Internet Explorer. Let's open up Microsoft Word and learn how the keyboard works. If your screen doesn't look exactly like this, don't worry. There are different versions of Microsoft Office. This is Microsoft Office 2007. Even though they look slightly different on screen, the way that you open documents, type information and save and file your documents is similar. Microsoft Word is now open and you should see a blank page. This is called a new document. Every time you open up Word, it will open up with a new document. If you are already working in Word, clicking on new document will open a new document. As you work, it's important to save your documents. This you do by clicking on save as. The computer will then ask you, on screen that is, to type in a name for your document and where you would like to save it. Once you've done this, you will only need to save the document in future. Documents are saved in folders and it's important to set up your virtual filing system in a way that is easy for you to find files once you have saved them. We'll tell you more about that when we take a look at Windows Explorer. 
When you start using Microsoft Word, click into each one of the top navigation fields and play around with the different toolboxes and formatting keys. This is the best way to become familiar with a program. Right, more about the keyboard. The keyboard has letters and numbers as well as some function and formatting keys, cursors and symbols. Pressing the letter keys will type in lowercase. Pressing the number or symbol keys will type the image lowest on the key. The other symbols can be found by holding down the shift key and pressing the key with the symbol on it. Doing this will also write letters in uppercase. When the caps lock is on, all letters will be written in uppercase, but you will still need to hold down the shift key for the symbols on the top of the keys. In the middle of the keyboard is a space bar. Pressing this introduces a space between the letters or words. The cursor keys will move your mouse one row up or down or one character to the left or right. The enter or return key will send your mouse to the next line. And each time you press it, the cursor on the screen will move one more line down. If you want to reposition the cursor on screen, simply use your mouse to put the cursor in the right place and left click. Now, for more about Windows Explorer or the navigation system and creating your filing system. A filing system on a computer is like a tree with branches. Each big branch has many smaller branches and leaves. When you create a filing system, you're creating main folders with subfolders and documents saved within them. Creating a system that makes sense and naming and dating documents properly will make it easy to find documents, search for documents and email documents. Let's show you how it's done. By using your mouse, you can rename folders and documents. Create new folders within folders. Move folders. Copy folders. And move documents from one folder to another. As you need more folders, you simply add them. Now that you know how to use your mouse and keyboard and we've shown you how to use your filing system and word processing program for creating, saving and filing documents, it's time to move on to the Internet and the World Wide Web, which we'll refer to after this as the Web. Remember, in order to access the Internet and the Web, you will need to be connected. This can be done using a dial-up modem, 3G, visiting an Internet cafe or a location that has Wi-Fi. The Internet is like a super-speed road system that can access towns, cities and parks along the way at the push of a button. These towns, cities and parks are what we call websites. If you know the website address of the site that you are looking for, you can simply type it in and press enter. If you don't, you can use a search engine to find the website for you by typing in keywords to help you search. Let's use Google, which is a search engine, to search for the MyUnisa website. Look at the results. As you pass your mouse over the results, the arrow will turn into a hand. This means that you can click on it to take you to another page. Just like a book, websites have individual pages within the website. And here we are at MyUnisa. Just like we found MyUnisa, you can find anything you're looking for using a search engine. Information, books, music, literature references, even people. A lot to remember in 10 minutes. But once you have access to a computer and can practice, it will get easier and easier. There are many tools and devices that we haven't covered, but this should be enough to get you started. The Goodwill Community Foundation provides a range of free computer tutorials on their website 
www.gclearnfree.org. Go and try some out to sharpen your skills. Ask a friend who is familiar with computers or a fellow student to help you when you sit down at the computer for the first time. It can be daunting. But remember, it's like learning to ride a bicycle. Once learnt, never forgotten.